Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to calculate the photon frequency uh, of the photon given up when an electron in a hydrogen atom undergoes a transition, an, an atomic transition where it goes from a higher energy level to a lower energy level. So what we're going to do in this example is we're going to be assuming again a hydrogen atom and we're going to be looking at what happens when an electron starts at n equals 3 and drops down to n equals 2. So I've already drawn a picture here, um, kind of a model of a hydrogen atom. And again, this picture is not to scale. Uh, if these orbital, you know, if the nucleus was actually this big, this first orbital distance here would would not be probably, uh, you know, even in the building you're in. You know, it'd be many thousands, hundreds at least of meters away. But all right, so we're going to look at an electron going from uh, three to two. So I'm going to start maybe with a picture here. Here's my electron. Doesn't really matter where in the picture I assume it starts, but if it's if it's you know anywhere in the shell and it drops down to a lower shell, it will give up a photon in its in this process. Now um, we can write a very easy energy balance for this, right? And it's you know this is just basic laws of conservation. Whatever you start with has to equal whatever you give up plus whatever you're left with. So I can I can kind of use that concept to write a little equation here. This photon, or I'm sorry, this electron starts with an energy equal to what I'm going to call E3, which is the energy of an electron in the third shell. Now I've already written over here, hopefully you've watched my previous video about Bohr theory, but you know, according to Bohr theory, this is how those energies can be calculated, minus 13.6 EVs over n squared. Again, where EV is called an electron volt. So this is how much energy this electron started with. And that has to equal the sum of two things. The energy given up, or the energy carried away by the photon, plus the energy that it's left with, which is the energy in uh, position, or in shell two. And again, that's not from uh, uh, complex concepts from physics. That's just basic conservation laws. So it's just like, you know, I start out with $30 in my wallet. I give away $10. I now have $20. And the arithmetic relationship would be 30 equals uh, 10 I gave away plus 20. All right, now we can calculate these values. So E3 is equal to minus 13.6. EVs uh, over 3 squared. And if we calculate a value for that, let's see what I get here. For energy 3, I get minus 1.51 EVs. And now, and again, this is for energy 3. Energy 2, we would get by taking minus 13.6 EVs and dividing by 2 squared. And when we do that, I get minus 3.4 EVs. There's energy two. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take these values and put, the, put them into this relationship. So <clears throat> E3, let's see, is minus 1.51 EVs. And that has to equal the energy of the photon uh, plus energy two which is minus 3.4 EVs. And now it's a pretty easy equation here to solve for the energy of the photon. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, solve for that value and just write it up here. If I solve that for the energy of that photon, I get 1.89 EVs. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just put that right here. Energy of the photon given up 1.89 EVs. All right, so this is how we find the energy of the photon given up when we go from a higher orbit to a lower orbit, right? We just write out a simple energy balance. We then use uh, this relationship, which is a consequence of Bohr theory, to calculate the initial and final energies. Then we just put them into our energy balance here, calculate the energy of the photon. So now what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to need more room. I'm going to take a moment and clean up this work, get rid of this. I don't need this anymore. And if you're following along here and you're in one of my classes, you may want to pause this and uh, get this all copied down. All right. Now, thinking down the road. So photon energy is dependent on frequency through Planck's constant. 
where Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds. Now, if we're going to use this relationship, you know, we, we, got, we can do one of two things. One, we can convert this to units of EV seconds, or two, we have to convert this to units of joules. So I'm going to go ahead and just convert this to units of joules. This energy, 1.89 EVs, uh, can be written in joules by multiplying by the conversion factor. There's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th joules per EV. I know it's the same as the fundamental unit of charge. That's just a consequence of how the electron volt is defined. If you're wondering about that, uh, go back and review my video on electron volts. All right? And what we get out of this is 3.024 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. All right? So now what we can do is we can use this relationship now to find the frequency. And I'm going to go ahead and write it out. So we're going to have 3.024 times 10 to the minus 19th joules equals Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34th joules times the frequency. I'm sorry, joule seconds. Planck's constant has units of joule seconds. All right. <clears throat> now you'll notice here unit-wise, um, when we take this value, divide by this value, we have units of 1 over seconds, and that's uh, what a hertz is. So when we solve this for the frequency, I get, let's take a look, see here, how do I get out of this? I, and what I did here, um, you know, I just solved this, the shorthand is take this guy, divide by this guy, and I wouldn't run the powers of 10 in, uh, through your calculator if I were you, it's just, it's just too many, you know, it's just a lot of extra digits. Just take this, divide by this, and what I get is point. 456 times 10 to the 15th hertz. The 15th is coming from 10 to the negative 19th divided by 10 to the minus 34th. Okay, now that's not proper stand, uh, scientific notation, to which point I would say kind of so what, but I, I think I'll go ahead and just do this. I'm going to write this in uh, scientific notation. This would be 4.56 times 10 to the uh, 14th hertz. And again, what I did is I just shifted the decimal. If I multiply this by 10 to maintain equality, I got to divide that by 10. All right, <clears throat> so we have the frequency. And at this point, we could go to the electromagnetic spectrum. I'm going to and look it up. But I'm going to go ahead and calculate the wavelength first. So to calculate the wavelength, we use this relationship. For electromagnetic waves, C is equal to frequency times wavelength. All right, C is 3 times 10 to the 8th meter per second. The frequency we just calculated at 4.56 times 10 to the 14th hertz times the wavelength. And I'm going to go ahead and calculate a value here. I get, and again, what I'm going to do is, you know, take 3, divide by 4.56, and I get 0.668. And then when you take 10 to the 8th, divide by 10 to the 14th you end up with 10 to the minus 6. And again, I recommend just doing these powers of 10 in your head. It's faster and ultimately probably more accurate than trying to run them through your calculator, just because you know, every time you got to increase the number of things you're uh, typing, you're increasing the probability of a mistake. All right. Now, <clears throat> in, in this region here, the nanometer is a very common unit. Um, for uh, wavelengths in this region of the spectrum. So I'm going to go ahead and write this in nanometers. Nano means 10 to the minus 9th. I'm going to write this up here somewhere. Nano, 10 to the minus 9th. So if I want to make that a 10 to the minus 9th, I have to uh, divide it by 10 to the third power, divide by 1,000. And I can do that and maintain equality if I multiply this by uh, 1,000. So this is going to be 668 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. Oops, I should have put that unit back there, meter. Right? And this is 668 nanometers. So we have the frequency of the photon given up. We have the wavelength. And I'm going to add here, um, you know, what part of the electromagnetic spectrum is this? So the visible part of the spectrum is right around from about 400 nanometers to about seven or 750 nanometers. 
this thing is visible because it's in that region. And if you go look at a uh, any sort of layout of the electromagnetic spectrum and you check this, this is uh, in the basically the red part. So this is uh, not only know the frequency and the wavelength, but I also know that it's visible and it's red. Right? And I'm not going to do this in this video, but I would also occur, uh, encourage you to look up the atomic spectra or the emission spectra for hydrogen. And what you'll, if you look there, you'll see this guy sitting there. Uh, look, you know, just to the left of 600, look between uh, 600 and 700 nanometers, and you should see a red band, a single red band just sitting there kind of all by itself. So anyway, the point of this video is how to calculate the photon frequency and wavelengths and, and to classify it uh, when an electron drops down in orbit or drops down to a lower energy level. Now, I want to throw in here, you know, a couple side things to point out. Had this electron dropped from three to one, that's a much larger energy drop. It's kind of important to understand, well, what would have happened? If we dropped from three to one, the photon energy would be higher because that's a bigger jump in energy. And that would result in a larger frequency. And what we would have found, and I'm not going to do this in this video, but if you actually repeat this process, um, going from three to one, what you'll find is that that frequency will be high. This wavelength will be very low. I think it's probably going to be around 300 some nanometers or so, which is not in the visible spectrum. Uh, what you'll find is that things in the uh, UV region. So that's not a visible one. In fact, for the hydrogen atom, none of them from uh, from two to one or three to one or four to one, none of those are visible. It turns out the energy jumps are just too high. The, the visible ones in the hydrogen atom are the three to twos four to twos, five to twos, and so forth. So anyway, um, I hope this video helped demonstrate these concepts. Have a great day.